So Jessica, we should probably talk about the interview we're about to do with Monica in just a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Can I just grab a piece of paper first? She's kind of rather if you didn't. Uh, why not? It's just a piece of paper. Well, you know, I just, I don't want to deplete the supply. There's not a lot of paper out there and we could be here for a while, so. You know you work in a magazine, right? There is literally paper everywhere. I kind of beg to differ. Oh, that. Well, yeah. uh, you know, again, um, we're going to need to keep printing and, and writing articles and doing things of that, so I just feel like we don't want to deplete the supplies, so we just need to do a little bit of rationing, if that's okay. I hear where you're coming from, Dalton, but you know what they say, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush? First off, I've never put a bird in my hand. They're disgusting, disease-ridden creatures. But I hear what you're saying, because you're not going to let this go, so let me see what I can do. There you go. Let's just talk to Monica. See, I knew you'd come to my way of thinking on this. Monica, let's get, let's get right into the episode. Do you think this was a strategic move by Kimmy to get rid of you, or was it a personal move that she used uh, this whole female alliance comment of yours as just a, a reason to get rid of you? I don't even know. I don't know Like that Kimmy can even come up with a move like that by herself. <laughs> Maybe like the survivor gods helped her out with that one. I have no idea, but she just, I don't know if she woke up on the wrong side of the bed this morning or that morning for that matter, but um, I don't think it was a highly strategic move, even if she thinks it was. So no hard feelings. <laughs> no, I mean, I doubt she'll win the game. <laughs> well, let's talk. Let's go go through Clamgate, as it will now be uh, referred to. I mean, was she not rationing food? Was this an ongoing problem, other than what we saw? Well, Kimmy woke up every morning and she's like, "I'm hungry. Let's go get clams and crabs." And I was like, "All right, let's go get clams and crabs." And we were so excited. We're like, "Wow, our beach is just..." We have all this food. We have all this stuff from the pirate ship. We have these giant clams. Amazing. And as time wore on, it became harder to find those big giant clams. And and in my opinion, in my scholarly opinion, maybe those clams don't grow overnight. Maybe they take a long time to get to be that that size. And so all I was saying was, we're only on day what twelve at that point. Maybe we should ration them just a little bit. And she's like, I don't care. I'm hungry. I just want, I just want, there's clams. Let's get them. Let's bring them back. And we don't have to eat them today. And it's, how do you really keep clams like that alive at camp? Well, you have a refrigerator at camp, right? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. You know, like, let's just throw them in the freezer, Kimmy. We'll throw them in the freezer. Clams and our crabs and everything's going to be okay. And I'm just like, Was there more to the beef between you two other than that? Like, were you guys not getting along or seeing eye to eye on other things as well? Yeah. I was told if we had gone to tribal the first day that Kimmy would have gone home. Um, and I tried to protect Kimmy early on. And so I don't know if, if people tried to work on that and separate us, but I always thought that Kimmy and I were cool to the point that I kind of put the survivor roles aside and I was like, okay, she's my girlfriend. Like I can, you know, bitch her out one second. We'll be fine. But of course, like once we got home and I started asking around, I realized that Kimmy's the one who turned on me. But she was really good about keeping her temper aligned and, and not um, revealing that she was against me and out to get me. And, I mean, she, I told her I wanted to do an all girls alliance. I didn't see an all boys alliance. I don't understand why you want to be a rat and a snitch about that if you're a girl, you know? Yeah, I mean, I think girls alliances have a, a wonderful history, a proud history on Survivor. Did you, were you committed to that? Did you feel like that was the way to go? That's what I wanted to do, but at the same time, I didn't want to stir the pot and um, and and yell that out too loudly. So I only told her because I trusted her, and and to go back and say that to, you know, the head of the Bro Alliance, Jeremy and Stephen, who's probably on the bottom from day one, is just so stupid. <laughs> I, I still, I mean, I can't. I don't see any rationale in that whatsoever. Yeah, and I do agree with you that Spencer, out of those two of them, is the much bigger threat. I mean, much bigger threat. I would be so nervous but to play with him. I didn't want to huge, cause a huge stink and be like, well, we have to send Spencer home. Because I got along with both of them. I was just thinking a more strategic game. Speaking of which, Monica, I mean, we, we I know you had the same issue where you're setting up every Wednesday night. You're getting so excited to watch your return to Survivor. You, you turn on the TV and then you barely see yourself. Was that really difficult to take? I have to imagine that wasn't too fun. Uh, I mean, even the first time I feel like when 
I was on early on in the show. I didn't get the best at it, but I was at least shown because I was in the finals. But like Jeff Garner's a big personality and he didn't make it as far as I did. And you still see a ton of him. I think it just would have been more interesting for my story and for my character arc had you seen the alliances that I at least tried to form and why they failed. But you don't even see that. As the viewer and as my fans who actually voted me to be on the show, you see nothing. You don't see, you, you, for, for all you know, I walked on the beach and just didn't do anything and didn't align with anyone, which is so untrue. Uh, me as a person, if you saw me play the first time, you know that I'm constantly in game mode. The minute I walked on the beach, I was forming alliances with Kimmy, um, Jeremy, Keith. Maybe I formed them with the wrong people, but at the same time, I formed them and I was wanting to be loyal to my people. What were your thoughts when the swap happened? When you saw, okay, oh, here's... I thought that I was like sitting pretty. I was like, that was great. We're in the majority. Poor Tasha. Poor Savage. You know, that's <laughs> those are my thoughts. I'm like, oh. Well, we saw how that played out for me. <laughs> have you talked to Kimmy since then? Like, have you guys made peace or are you still... No, I have. I mean, I've, I haven't like spoken to her on the phone or in person. Like, we've texted and she's like, you know, it was whatever it's like I regret not trusting you and it's like you probably should <laughs> I mean I doubt she'll win the game but I mean I don't know it looked like a personal beef she had with you what do you think it was then with Jeremy and Steven I don't even why did know. Jeremy and Steven I, turn I, on you the only thing that I'm hearing even just from going into it is that she thought that I had it out for her but I never had it out for her I've I've I was, in my, in my intentions were, I will be loyal. So there was one person I wanted to be loyal to was Kimmy. And I didn't even know her before the game. I was like, let's, we're both New Yorkers. Let's stick together. And I thought that that was going, and she's like, okay, even if people are talking, just know that we're good. And I don't know where that even turned. She got, she, I guess she got somewhat taken aback when I said, you know, later on, once we merge, we're going to have to take Jeremy out. And I guess that took her aback, but who cares? I mean, he's just, he's, he's, a strong dude. Why would you not want to take him out? <laughs> yeah, well, but why do you think then that Jeremy and Steven went with the vote to get you out? I don't know. Maybe they could maybe mastermind the whole thing. I have no idea. I don't know what their thinking was. I didn't know I was going home. I was genuinely blindsided. You're, I mean, I don't think your name was called until the fifth piece of paper that was read, right? I mean, it was, third, or, or, you know, third or fourth, yeah. and it was just like, you must have had, and then all of a sudden it was like, boom, boom, boom. No, it was so weird. The fact that, that Kimmy was the one who wrote my name down came as a huge shock to me. And, and that just goes to show, I mean, you don't really, you never know who your friends are. When Jeff, Maybe I'm not a survivor as I thought. <laughs> when Jeff Probst says to you, uh, Monica, is this vote pretty much locked down? Does any bell go off in your head? Why is he asking me this? No, it didn't at all. I mean, maybe it should, but <laughs> it did not. I was like, yep, it's locked down. That's what I thought. So sad. Well, <laughs> well, Monica, it's bad news for you. We know blind sides make good TV. Uh, we all like to see a blind side, except when we're on the receiving end of it. So uh, sorry it happened to you, but uh, I, I like hashtag blindside last night. I kind of I was so swept up in the moment that I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> all right, um, Monica, thanks so much for calling in. We appreciate. It. Take care. We'll see you at the reunion. Love you guys. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. So, what are we thinking, Girls Alliance? What? No. Oh, so get rid of Kristen then. Wait, what? 